nice job. About halfway up the mountain now, that's about it. Maybe a little bit further than halfway, but the rough terrain is ahead of us, you guys know that, okay? So let's keep, keep climbing, keep climbing. Don't slip, don't slip. The now bowl eligible Spartans have raised some eyebrows this season. They've overcome expectations and proven doubters wrong. They've accomplished this all while remaining hungry for more. This is an attitude that sophomore defensive end Kenny Willekes is very familiar with. Horn looking to throw. And he'll be knocked down for a second time inside the five. Kenny Willekes got him. Junior year, I didn't really talk to any colleges, and then probably through senior year, I started talking to a couple, mostly D2 schools, and then no Big Ten schools really came, or even Division I schools came into the picture until a couple weeks before signing day. During Kenny's senior year of high school, he found himself at MSU while a friend was on a campus visit. It was a chance visit that changed everything. I just happened to stop and I was coming back from a visit to Wayne State with one of my buddies. He was talking to Coach State and I just came in and I was just sitting up there and he, he just asked me like, what are you doing? And just was curious, wanted to know. I told him I was wanting to go to Minnesota. So he told me he was gonna like take a look at my film and just see what I could do. And he talked to Coach D and they ended up coming in later that week and talking to me and we set up a official visit as the walk on visit week and then I committed right the next day and signed on signing day a couple weeks later. I, I think about it all the time, I think, because, I mean, I almost didn't even go on that visit to Wayne State. Something came up. I mean, if I hadn't gone on that visit, I probably would never end up even being at this school. Like, none of this would even have happened. So, I mean, I like to think it's part of, all part of God's plan of getting me here. It was his divine will. I think it was just kind of something that happened that just in the, out of the blue and ended up being the right thing for me. Let's go, nice, nice, a player who walks onto a college football team seldom sees game action. They are often utilized in practice on the scout team. For Kenny Willekes, walking on was just the starting point. Compared to the first team, you pretty much just scout team. So you are, you do look at the other team's defense and I'll be, I would be say Minnesota's defense for the week I would run their defense and uh, you're more of a practice player with anyone who takes a chance there are voices of doubt and disbelief Kenny uses those voices to fuel his fire all right there's definitely plenty of blowback especially from people around the area Grand Rapids to say, you know, you'll never play there, you're just wasting your time. Why wouldn't you just go to a D2 school and take the money and just play? But, I mean, I always wanted to come here and prove myself, which has helped me put a chip on my shoulder. I definitely say there was days of doubt. I never, I never thought about quitting. I was never in my mind. I always, I, my plan was to come here and push myself until I played, do everything I had to do, and, to get myself on the field, but there was definitely days of doubt where I would go home and I'd talk to my roommate like, man, like I'm doing everything I can, it just doesn't seem to be working out. And Grayson Miller, my roommate, he's always been there pushing me. We've been roommates since the first day we stepped on campus and uh, still roommates now. And, uh, you know, there was times he'd get down. Uh, my freshman year, I was playing and uh, he was just trying to figure out his way a little bit. I just told him that his the way he prepares, the way he works, the way he competes in practice and was very successful in practice against the guys who were playing on Saturdays as a scout team player. I was like, yeah, you, your scholarship's going to come. You just got to keep your head on straight, keep doing well in school. The coaches will recognize that and you'll eventually be rewarded. Yeah! I love it! I mean, it's not, definitely not easy as a walk-on. You gotta come in, you gotta pay for your school, and you gotta give everything each and every day to get what you deserve. And for people that work hard and do the right things, eventually it's gonna all play out. No comparison. I thought I knew everything, but I was lost. I was 
two, 220 pounds, skinny, un my footwork was terrible, no technique. When you come as a freshman, you think you have everything figured out, but you learn so much over the years. Um, Technique-wise, from playing the position of defensive end to just, I mean, I've put on 25 pounds, gained two inches, so physically I'm in a whole nother realm than I was. Hit it hard, hit it hard, hit it hard, good fight now, fight it, push back, push back, push back. And then mentally, I mean, you're so much more strong after going through a couple years of college and you're used to camp and going to practice and going to class and everything. So I'd say I've grown tremendously since I first got here. I think when he first got here, he thought that football was just kind of running around and just hitting everybody as hard as you could. But uh, he really understands the technical aspects of the game now. And I think that's what made him such a great football player. After finally seeing the field in one game in 2016, all of Kenny's work came to fruition. It was uh, in the spring. I had uh, started to elevate my play a little bit. It was when Coach Snides had started coaching me. It was actually pretty ironic because my high school coach happened to be there and he had no clue and Coach D had no clue he was going to be there. He just happened to be there for that practice watching. We were just in the meeting room and Coach D called me up and he's like, I have two things for you. And he held up a pair of scissors first. And he's like, first I got to give you a haircut. If you let me cut your hair, I'm going to give you a scholarship. I kind of like leaned over like and pulled out part of my hair because I thought he was joking. He snipped a piece of my hair off and then gave me a scholarship. But I mean, it was a pretty incredible feeling, obviously, all, my, all your teammates cheering for you. And I mean, it's something I've obviously worked for for so long and talked to my roommate about like, I wanted it more than anything in the world. So being able to get that in front of all my teammates was an incredible feeling. I think it's always exciting when a guy gets that, that ultimate prize. And uh, uh, so, you know, I, he gave me a little something, I gave him something back. And I probably should have taken more hair. It was a great moment, I think, for our football team, not just him, but for our football team, because it, uh, he's a well-liked player on the team. Uh, people appreciate his hard work, and there's a message there for everybody. Uh, keep working hard, and good things are going to happen. First time we've really had the chance to, to credit Kenny Willekes, the defensive end for Michigan State. Shouldn't be surprised that he chases it down from the backside. He's one of the hardest working defensive linemen in the entire Big Ten. His motor never stops, makes a big play. To make Gotta keep working each and every day. I can't take anything for granted just because I've made a couple of plays, nothing special. And it's all credit goes to my teammates because we have 11 people flying to the ball. I'm going to eventually make plays. Side left, nowhere to run. He will lose yardage. Kenny Willekes and Andrew Dowell spill him. He's been the same guy the whole time, but I think he has a lot of confidence right now. I think he uh, really believes in his ability and he just knows what he has to do to be successful. Personally, I just keep trying to grow from every game. I feel like there's some I've learned each and every week, some I've been able to pick up from uh, watching the film. So hopefully I continue to learn and grow and then uh, also just help the younger players in my position. Like uh, I'm trying to mentor Jacob Panashuk and take him along. So once we graduate, there'll be younger players that can take over our position. How about Jacob Panashuk? Big Mike's little brother who's a true freshman into the backfield to take the speedster down for a loss. The fact that there's so many walk-ons that get scholarships and come into the light play well here is just because due to the fact the way the coaches develop players. If you're willing to come into work every day and learn consistently, you're able to grow and get on scholarship because the coaches really do develop players here. They teach you so much, whether it be technique through the, our position coaches, whether it's life lessons from the head coaches or just mental lessons even from Coach Manny. Just if you're willing to come in and work hard and learn from everyone, you can make it. Every football team in America has what they call preferred walk-ons. And those are guys that are recruited to come here as a non-scholarship player. And eventually, some of those guys rise to the top. You need know, to talk about Blair White, tremendous player. Uh, you know, Jack Conklin, Kyler Ellsworth, Rose Bowl MVP. I think this is a great place to do it. We give everybody an opportunity. I tell our guys all the time, hey, I don't care who plays. It makes no difference to me. We're going to play the best player. Coming from not even knowing where I was, if I was going to play Division I college football ever, being a walk-on, still not knowing if I was ever going to play here, what the whole situation was going to be like, and then finally giving it an opportunity, I mean, it definitely feels incredible. Just taught me just to keep working hard, keep moving forward no matter what, no matter what comes at you. If, if you want something, you got to go get it yourself. You can't sit around and say, oh, I'm not playing, so I'm going to mope. That's, that's not going to get you anywhere.
After a six-year run as defensive back in the NFL, Sheldon White coached at his alma mater and then successfully climbed his way up the ranks of the Detroit Lions front office. Now he continues his football career with the Michigan State Spartans. For me, the football is always the love of my life. So um, when I had the opportunity at the end of my, my playing days, I was interning as an accountant student at the Dayton Power and Light Company in Dayton, Ohio. And I had a choice between choosing that or choosing a chance and opportunity to coach at Miami, Ohio. I chose that and just continued the football career. So for me, it's been 39 straight training camps and I'm enjoying every bit of it. MSU's ability to find hidden talent has always been strong. It is now even stronger thanks to the leadership of seasoned veteran Sheldon White. Last year I came in as a consultant, which was really kind of, you know, initially it was more by assignment. Coach D'Antonio would say, hey, I need you over here for two weeks. I need you to go join that group. And I was always available for the players in a mentoring role and also an advisory role. This year I'm more into an assignment in player personnel and recruiting, more so than really kind of being an extra. Last year was, it was great because I was more of an extra and giving suggestions and feedback and just kind of helping everyone out. Sheldon is also a counselor for our guys in terms of NFL prospects, you know, what are your prospects, and he's brutally honest with them at times, uh, what you have to do and where you're at in the process, and, and I think that's good for our players to hear. Our players under, need to understand that football at some point in time is going to end for everybody, so they need to be prepared in terms of what to do after football ends. Uh, so I think he gives them a very realistic opinion of, uh, of what's going on, uh, with their football ability, how they're playing. From an NFL perspective, he doesn't know the X's and O's, but he knows, you know, how this guy looked and that type of thing relative to what the NFL may be saying about them. And I think that's, that's a big positive for our guys and the way we look at them. That's the biggest thrill to me is like being able to be a part of a group of people that are attempting to get these guys as far as they can go. That's academically, that's socially, and then that's also the uh, football wise. And so just making sure that you can get these guys up to the highest level that you can get them. Make sure you give them the best chance to give the best presentation to an NFL owner or to an NFL executive or to an, uh, a future employer and then see what that where that can take them. So for me, that's the biggest rule for us is being a part of that team that's trying to get these guys and mold them and have them grow and develop as people, not only on the field but off the field, and then see how far it can take them. Um, and that's what I get excited about that challenge. Even the more challenging players on our team, it still gives me a lot of energy to, to go right back at the guys that are doing the wrong things and making sure we keep those guys here, give them the, the energy, give them the chance and the effort to get where they need to go or want to go. And then you're on your own now. I hope I gave, a, gave you a great chance of, of, of being successful in the future. Like recruiting, family is a crucial component of the Spartan football program. Sheldon gets to experience the best of both of these worlds as he watches his son Cody compete and grow every day. I've already seen leaps and bounds with him as far as in the strength program. He looks a lot different now than he did four months ago. It's an awesome experience just to be around it and be that close to it. At the same time, though, the coaches and the, uh, the other people talk to him more than I do, probably. I want to make sure that he grows up. Uh, so I'm kind of, I stay back and kind of let him do his thing and, and allow those, let, allow our coaches and our administrators to, to handle him. And I'll handle him with my role as well sometimes, but really I wanted to play the dad role, but it's like I'm there, but I'm not really there. He has uh, helped me out in both aspects, life and uh, football. Just teaching me the little stuff that uh, most people wouldn't get uh, playing receiver as well, because he played DB, knowing how the DB is going to play us. And just in life, just being a, a dad for real and um, just helping me out in that, in that way as well. Sometimes as well, he can't really hold it in, and he just gets excited because uh, he's seeing his son succeed. After the game against Indiana, he had gave me a big hug, and it was fun having him on the field and um, him just being there for me. I do truly believe that continuity wins, and so you get the family atmosphere, not just from family members, but just the entire group. It's a tight-knit group. Um, Coach Antonio's group has been working. I've known these guys for years because I used to come up here as an NFL scout an evaluator and executive. So um, just being able to be around people that have been around each other for a long time and kind of join in with that group and attempt to blend in has been, been real. We 
are ready to go at Ryan Field on the campus of the Northwestern Wildcats. 44 degrees here in Evanston. That is winter weather. The struggle is real. The people have said to me this week, and you've heard it too, that maybe this is a trap game for the Spartans. This is going to be a tough game against a well-coached team. The Spartans are going to have to play extremely well to win this game. And don't let the 4-3 and three record by the Northwestern Wildcats fool you into thinking that this team is not a very well-coached, very well-disciplined team with a lot of talent. Luke Otto to kick it off for Northwestern. Offset eye right, Lewerke. Downfield. That is caught by Cody White. And White takes it inside the 10 picking up where he left off last week. The true freshman coming off a breakout game. Gerald Holmes to his left. Perfect snap. Looks right, looks left, runs to his right. Looking back to his left, he'll throw on the run to the goal. Cody White! Catch is made! Cody White, touchdown, MSU! What a great wow. ad-lib by Lewerke. Ditto for Cody White, who scores his first touchdown as a Spartan. Side left. Thorson throws left side. Catch is made by the tight end. And he gives Northwestern a first and goal. Spartans up 10-0. Just over four minutes to play in the first half. Biggest play of the football game. Fourth and goal for Northwestern. Thorson will try to sneak it in. Does he get the push? He does. And it's a touchdown. The Wildcats are on the board. Michigan State's offense had almost 200 yards in the first quarter. Less than 20 here in the second. Michigan State with a three-point lead. Northwestern in position to tie this game before halftime. Here's the snap back, the put down, plenty of leg. It's up and it is good, and it's official. Our halftime score at Ryan Field in Evanston, Illinois. Michigan State 10, Northwestern 10. Michigan State started strong in the first half. Northwestern finished strong. Oh, it's been a tell of two quarters. Now we've got a ball game. And this Spartans offense has struggled to score in the third quarter. Their previous five games. Shotgun snap to Brian Lewerke. Right side down with throw. it. There Jump it is. Catch made what a catch. by Daryl Stewart out near midfield. Brian Lewerke will hold. Redshirt freshman Matt Coglin with the boot. Long enough, oh, hit the right the crossbar, the right goal post. No good. Because both of these defenses are forcing the quarterback to beat them with their arm. They've decided that the rushing attack won't be the reason they lose the game today. Fourth quarter, tie game. They line up at the right hash mark. Forson runs. The pass, into his right. pass. He wants to throw it into the end zone. And the ball comes down, and Northwestern, with a trick play, takes a 16 to 10 lead. The Spartan offense has gone into hibernation since that first quarter. Brian Lewerke by himself in the shotgun. The snap back. He tosses it over the middle for Daryl Stewart. Stewart with the catch. Stewart's inside the 15. It is 17 to 10, 53 seconds left in regulation. Fourth end of the ball game for Michigan State. Takes the snap. Now he pumps it. Nice touch. Throws into the end zone for Felton Davis. He came down Davis with it. Davis comes down with it. Did he have a foot down? He yeah. did this. He did. Touchdown, MSU. This football in Evanston. Michigan State with a late rally, a late drive. Thorson has Jackson to his left. Looks right. Oh, Throws man. that way, man open, tight end, touchdown, Wildcats. Michigan State quarterback Brian Lewerke will now lead the Spartan offense. They need a touchdown and a PAT. Split left, snap back. Lewerke throws left for Felton. Leaping grab in the end there zone. There it is. Touchdown, MSU. <laughs> Michigan State will have the ball first here in double overtime. First and 10, Lewerke by himself in the shotgun. 
Brian Lewerke throws into the end zone. There it is! Cody White over the shoulder near the back line of the end zone makes the grab. Touchdown, MSU. Western now needs a touchdown and a PAT to extend the game into a triple overtime. Hand off to Jackson, knifes through. He's at the goal line, he's in. Northwestern has the ball to start the third overtime. Takes the snap in time. Feels a little heat. Throws over the middle. Crossing pattern catch made by Flynn Nagel. And he turns it upfield along the left sideline and dives into the end zone for a touchdown. Sparks on the ball. Now having to score a touchdown and get a two-point conversion. Brian Lewerke takes the shot. Oh. Snap. Ball ripped out of his hands. He'll pick it up, run to his left, wind up, throw back oh, no. to the right side near the end zone, and it is going to be intercepted at the goal line. Matt Soka won up for it. So did two Wildcats. This one ends in frustration for the Spartans. You know, we've got a lot of disappointing guys, but credit Northwestern, the game that they played. You know, our football team played with conviction. They play with energy, they play with emotion, they play with intensity, they never stop playing throughout the entire time. That's all I can ever ask for a football team. You know, if there's some execution, there's some plays left out on the field from a structure standpoint, coaching wise, I'm talking about, um, that's always gonna happen. But as long as we do our very, very best and come to play and prepare, you know, I can handle it.